My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. Other people make friends. I'm just trying to save a little money. My job is not just to entertain, but to explain this stuff. So call me at 1-800-743-CNBC. Tweet me at Jim Kramer. Will you stop it already with the morning buying? That is what I've been screaming lately right in the camera when I'm on commercial break for the morning show I'm on. Consider these stats where morning buyers have been getting steamrolled, including today, where the Dow opened up 94 points and only finished up just 22, and the S&P declined 0.2% after opening up 9 points, and the Nasdaq lost 0.52%. Yesterday, just looking at the S&P, we opened at 5,068, up 17.56 points, or 0.35%, and then closed at 5.022. The day before that one, we opened at 5.064, up 2.77, or 0.5%, and we closed at 5.051. Monday, we opened at 5.149 and closed all the way down at 5.061. Last Friday, we actually opened down more than 27 points at 5.175, but we still finished the day even lower at 5.123. Yeah? Why do people keep making the same darn mistake? I think there's a widespread belief that you can still buy the dip. That's been the right move ever since the long-term interest rates peaked back in October. It's worked before, so they think it's going to work again. Well, that's really good thinking. Now, though, buyer, buying the dip is the quintessential wrong thing to do. It is just off the tracks, and I'm going to tell you why. First, bonds are char in charge right now, not stocks. Bonds are in charge, and once again, the long-term interest rates are going higher like they did today, like they've been doing throughout this whole recent decline. Sure, there's been a flight to quality on some days, but we know that doesn't count. Ever since we started getting hot inflation numbers, the bond market's been doing the work of the Fed. Yet traders and investors just can't seem to resist because dip buying had been working. But it was only right when rates were going lower. It's wrong when rates are going higher because you are fighting the tape. Second, we don't have enough of what I've started calling Brown shoots. That's my name for signs of a slowdown. Just like green shoots are signs of an acceleration. Brown shoots can come from companies with disappointing earnings. Later on the show, I'm going to walk you through the sudden downturn at Prologis, a gigantic real estate investment trust that's a global leader in logistics facilities. And J.B. Hunt, one of the nation's largest trucking companies. Brown shoots abound. I could uh, include two auto-related names, CarMax, the used car dealer, which blew up when it reported and Snap-on Tools, the reliable specialty tool company that sells to individual auto repair shops that lost an astounding 7.6% of its value on a rare earnings miss. The house of pain. But we don't have a lot of blow-ups in the morning, so buyers figure, hey, the coast is clear on most days. It isn't! There's no coast is clear call because we aren't trading on earnings right now. We're trading on fear. And fear does not lead to great closes. Third, not all stocks are created equal. We have what we used to call leaders, and the leaders, they are failing us. The biggest failure, Tesla, which is going down relentlessly in a totally scary pattern. The house of pain. How much will Tesla lose this quarter? That's a common refrain. How about that pivot to going into robo-taxi? Well, Hertz tried that going big with Teslas, and that failed. Why would that be any better for Tesla itself? The country's just not ready for self-driving cars. Instead, Americans want solid, inexpensive electric vehicles. Not expensive ones. Those are dumb. And they sure don't want Tesla's Cybertruck. I thought Elon Musk fanboys would buy it, but the darn thing has what I call no mojo. Maybe because it needs to be advertised? I don't know. I mean, perhaps Tesla needs to run a traditional pickup truck ad where some gravelly voice guy talks about ditching the Ford F-150 because the cyber truck has bulletproof windows. I can't think of any other selling point. Best I can do. Next, jury leader is Apple. Now, I've said you should own it, not trade it. I'm not going away from that. But if I had to buy it, I'd right, right, either wait so the stock pulls back to 160 or at least wait until the company reports and then it cuts its forecast. 
What you need to know is that stocks have not been bottoming on estimate cuts in this market. They fall and then they fall again. Can Apple pull a rabbit out of a hat? Sure, anyone can. Elon Musk can too. But I don't see magic happening yet with Apple. Its dreariness is so palpable that it weighs on us every day. See, it cuts forecast, goes down, and maybe next day goes down as you get some uh, downgrades, and then it bottoms. That would be the pattern. Final devastating leader is my pal NVIDIA, which has a stock that can't find its footing. Even as it managed a small gain today, this is a very discerning market, and the rally in NVIDIA into its phenomenal GTC conference has been more than wiped out. Now, this is not a new pattern. NVIDIA tends to rally and then drift and go, go along, and then we get to the quarter, and it rallies again. Rinse and repeat. The difference this time? Your enemy, your fellow shareholders, who either don't know what NVIDIA does or is or now believe the generative AI is a scam. The stock won't be safe until all these weak hands get washed out. Unfortunately, so many of these fellow travelers bought NVIDIA at the wrong time. They didn't experience the run. They came in late, and they have a real bad cost base. It's a terrible entry point. These are the people who cannot take the house of pain. The house of pain. They know nothing! Maybe market leader Netflix can break the scan of wounded leaders flailing in the market. as reported a good number this evening, but in what has become a typical of the accentuate the negative pattern, the company's boilerplate warning about the future may be trans- eh, just being okay. Maybe that's transcending all the good news. Who knows? Fourth, we aren't getting any good aggregate data, and people don't seem to care. Well, that's wrong. They buy anyway. That's wrong. Why don't they realize that the data is in control, the CPI, the price deflator, the non-farm payroll report? Because the data determine the interest rates, and interest rates determine the stock market action right now. You cannot ignore the data anymore. You need some really weak economic market data to make the market go higher. Because Wall Street's desperate for a slowdown that would give the Fed an excuse to cut rates. It needs an excuse. It doesn't have one. Fifth. We keep ignoring the Middle East, and then when we get to Friday, we get scared to death that something will happen over the weekend, and people dump everything. There's always something to worry about in this conflict, so the pattern keeps repeating itself. Now, what would happen if people stopped buying in the morning and instead sold big from the get-go? Sell, 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 That, friends, is what I've been waiting for. You're not going to get a bottom, a serious bottom, a lasting bottom, until you have the big give-up. The gigantic end of days decline where people just can't handle the house of pain at all. No the house way. Of pain. They want a new address. They want the 5% CD address. The stock market address is just too horrendous. Don't buy, don't buy, don't buy. When you buy. get the vicious open, the down 1 or 2% abyss staring you right in the face, then the market has a chance to wrestle some terra firma. You need to have that, what I call, whoosh where we just crater at the opening. An abomination that includes lots of formerly bullish, now scaredy cat owners who don't want out, who they just went out so badly, they don't even care what price they get. Not only that, but the down opening doesn't mean a bottom for that day. For that, you need to have a true crescendo to follow the whoosh. Whoosh, then crescendo. Typically, that means you see a rally at the open, a whoosh down, and then machine gunners come in at those brave souls who try to buy the market, like the first day of the song. Then you get what I call the crescendo, just like in the music, where there's a colossal blowout that leaves people aghast, and you get a chance. The next day, the next day, you see the local news trucks with those weird antennae on the roofs. They'll have well-coiffed men or women with a mic in their hands, hanging around Wall and Broad Street, staring into a camera, trying to grab some bystander who'll talk to them about jumping off a building or something. You know, I used to go up to those people, and when they would ask me what I thought, I would say, hey, you know what? I think because you're down here, it means the market's bottoming. <laughs> well, of course, my interviews never aired. Bottom line, when you get the news that, tr that the trucks and the journalists asking people how they feel about losing fortunes in the stock market, that may mark the real bottom. Unfortunately, there's been no whoosh, no crescendo, and no local TV people with mics in their funny trucks. Until then, presume we have not yet bottomed. Hey, how about Matt in New Jersey? Matt. Hey, booyah, Jim. Yeah, Not bad. I was in Philadelphia today. Good time. How about you? Very good. Very good. Uh, the, stock, the, st the stock I am calling you about today is the American Airlines. Your earnings oh. are coming out next Thursday, and I would like to know if you think uh, I should add to my position now before they post the earnings or wait. And in your opinion, is American Airlines a buy, sell, or hold? Thanks okay, so that. let's, you know, we've got Delta pretty good numbers, and we have, um, without a doubt, United reporting great numbers. Will American continue that? I would tell you that American 14 is back to where it was, I mean, so, so long ago. Uh, you know what? I don't want to play uh, airline roulette, but I do believe that 14 bucks, down, I don't know, one down, two up. Hey, how about we go clear across the country to Jeff in California? Jeff. 
hey, Jim, I'm in L.A. I'll get right to the point. I bought $8,000 worth of square or block three years ago. It's up 16% in one year. Bam. And in three years, it's down 71.3%. Ouch. So I minus $6,000 in three years, Jim. I have very little patience. I told my son, David, I'm not a doctor. I have no patience. Should I continue praying, Jim? I'm very spiritual. Or should I sell now? Bam. Okay, let's think about this. I happen to think the company it can go higher. I like the last quarter. I know it's painful. I know that you don't have any patience. But can I ask for you to have fortitude? Because that's what it'll take. All right, once we get the new sh- trucks and the funny trucks and the things that about, and the journalists ask us how we feel about losing fortune in the stock market, that smells like a bottom. But unfortunately, we haven't seen that yet. Well, I mean, what do you think? If there's one thing you can count on during earnings season, it's that Wall Street will get some of them wrong. Tonight, I'm eyeing a charitable trust named Abbott Labs, one of the best companies in the business, telling you why the market may have misjudged this one all the way down. Then, are the package good stocks the whole package? Ha <laughs> ha! I'm taking a closer look at the comeback we're seeing in that space. And forget green shoots. You know what I'm eyeing? I'm eyeing the brown shoots that are being revealed by two major operators this earnings season and telling you what it means for the overall market. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.